Our scripture reading for today is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 32 to 40. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this for you, for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. If anyone thinks that he is not behaving properly toward his betrothed, if his passions are strong, and it has to be, let him do as he wishes. Let them marry. It is no sin. But whoever is firmly established in his heart, being under no necessity, but having his desire under control, and has determined this in his heart, to keep her as his betrothed, he will do well. So then, he who marries his betrothed thus does well, and he who refrains from marriage will do even better. A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is free to be married to whom she wishes, only in the Lord. Yet in my judgment, see, she is happier if she, mar she remains as she is, and I think that I too have the Spirit of God. This is the Word of God. Please be seated. I wondered this morning what your response would be if I were to say to you this morning, you know, I just thought that the typhoon was going to last and so I just didn't prepare anything to speak. Sorry, you don't get off that easy. I do want to honor your commitment to being here this morning. I know that some of you have had to dodge tree limbs and <laughs> a lot of issues to get here, and I'm glad you're here, and I just pray that God would bless your life uh, as a result of being here. If there ever was a church that really has good reason to celebrate singles and singleness, it's this church. This church was started by single ladies, International Mission Board missionaries, who left not only their home, but also under a lot of duress, mainland China, came here to establish this church. These single ladies, they had a single-minded purpose to them. And their single-minded purpose was that they would be involved with Jesus whom they loved in expanding his kingdom through the gospel and they founded this church. Now, they were not alone in that. There were others who came to help them. Dr. Carl Hunker came along. We also know that Pastor Joe Lian Hua came along and a lot of others. And Yet singles continue to bless this church, continuing. Uh, it, the singles in the choir, many singles are singing. And as a matter of fact, last week when the choir presented that wonderful uh, song to us, it was led by another international mission board single. So you see, we have a lot of reasons to celebrate singles and singleness. Jesus himself tells us that it's good for us to have a singleness of vision and purpose. Jesus said that if the lamp of our body is single, if it's simple and single and clear, then we have inside of us direction and we have progress. How to celebrate singleness. The Apostle Paul was one who was very intent on communicating to the church at Corinth the value of being single, especially in the difficult time that they were facing and that was continuing to increase in the degree of persecution. And he talks about people in verse 32 and 33. He speaks about the gift 
of focused service. Single people give something very special to the church. They give a gift of focused service. I know that's so because I watch our single pastor, Pastor Nick, work so diligently among us to bless us and serve us and glorify the Lord. I'm watching all the singles do all the things they do around here, and I'm thinking, wow, if it weren't for our single folks, I don't know what we would do uh, around here as far as keeping things moving along. The gift of focus service. Singleness itself is a gift. And single people are gifts that God has given to his church. And we really, in my heart of hearts, I can tell you, I celebrate singles. Because I know that singles are going to serve the Lord. Godly singles will serve the Lord with a, a focus that many of us who are married are still striving to either attain or maintain. Because, you see, they, they have that, that gift about them. And they, they have a gift of, of really being concerned about the overall body. Uh, there's, a, there's a word that's used in the Greek, and that's the first word, uh, merimnao, that means that they have a distributed, proper concern for the whole body of Christ. They have an overview in their focus service and they're looking at this and they're looking at that and how can we put it together and how can we serve. Now, that word, when it's used talking about couples, it means that we're kind of pulled apart in different directions. But when it's used talking about singles, it means that they have focus and they have a proper concern for the entirety of the body of Christ. They're gifts. And they're gifts to be celebrated. And not only that, there's another word uh, that's used in the Greek language. This, this word is aresco, and it means they willingly serve. They're rendering their service to others, not out of compulsion, not out of, oh, I must, oh, ingaida. No, it's... We want to because serving others and serving our Lord is what their focus of life is all about. Some of the most godly people I've ever met have been singles who are focused on the Lord Jesus. Focus is very, very important. I mean, it's very important. How important is it? Well, if you're out of focus, Nothing is clear. It's kind of like the Hubble telescope. The Hubble telescope was sent up into the heavens, and first of all, it couldn't go up on a rocket because the rocket kind of blew up, you know, and so then they had to send it up with another way. And then they finally got it up there, and, and they turned it on, and they looked at it, the scientists down on Earth, and they had this beautiful telescope up in the sky, and they looked, and all they saw was a bunch of colors blobbed up all together, out of focus. Oh, what will we do? So then they worked and worked and worked and worked, and finally they, they, they discovered there was a flaw in the mirror, and they worked very hard, and they sent a, a fix up to the space station. They got it fixed, and that's why we see all of the wonderful things that we see from space. Because of the Hubble telescope, they found focus. They fixed it. They brought things into focus. Very, very important. There was a joke that the engineers made. They said, listen, don't be part of any kind of project that rhymes with the word trouble. See, Hubble and trouble kind of rhyme together. They, they wanted no part of that. Singles are a challenge, a wonderful challenge to the entire church to move away from a self-centered life to a Christ-centered life, to find focus so that we can see truth and reality in Jesus Christ. Not just a blurry image of this, but a crystal clear image. You see, the self-centered life, the picture that a self-centered life gives unto a lost world is the same as that Hubble telescope before it was brought into focus. It's kind of indistinct. It's a big blob. It's just a bunch of colors. It's undecipherable what it's all about. 
But when we look at our singles and we recognize our godly singles who have a life that reflect the glory of the Lord and have that focus, then things come into focus for the world and they see the beauty, not of the universe, as beautiful as that is. They see the beauty of Jesus because they reflect his beauty to a lost world that so desperately needs to see him in his beauty and in his love. They bring focus. I think if things go the way I hope, we're going to see something here just in a moment. Is this the third one, please? Okay. If I take my glasses off, I can see about halfway to the back. And after that, things started getting real blurry for me. Now, I need these glasses because they help me focus. We go to the optometrist and we can see when they put us through these, uh, we get our eyes right up next to that machine and they start flicking those little lenses, you know, they're bringing things into focus for us. That's the gift that singles bring. That is why we can celebrate singles and singleness, because they bring a tremendous focus to us, and that focus is upon the Lord Jesus. That focus is loving Him, loving Him and seeing His kingdom expanded through the gospel of the Lord Jesus through sharing that gospel of Jesus with the lost world. Oops, let's go back one. I think we need to go back one, guys, if you can take me back one. Thank you. Singles give us something. They give us a beautiful picture of holiness. Holiness before the Lord. As we see them uniting their body and spirit in wholehearted submission to the Lord. As they pursue holiness before the Lord. As they pursue wholeness, W-H-O-L-E-N-E-S-S. -E -E -S, as they're pursuing holiness and wholeness in Christ, we see a beautiful picture of the holiness of the Lord Jesus when we look in the lives of our godly singles because they're reflecting His holiness to the world. Let, it never, let us never forget that we are called to be holy. There is a whole book in the Bible dedicated to holiness. The book of Leviticus. God said in the Old Testament, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And he also said it in the New Testament. Peter said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And when we see these godly singles and the gift that they are, they are giving us this beautiful picture of the holiness of our God. They, they are other than what we're used to seeing as the norm, so to speak. And they're giving us this beautiful picture of God who is so holy and other than. And they give us this single focus. Their single focus is to please the Lord, to please Him. You see, they, they have just kind of fine-tuned everything around that one central focal point of wanting to please the Lord 
as their master. What a beautiful picture of holiness that gives to us as the church. Holiness. They call us to live in the now with holiness. In the now with an awareness of the holy nature of our God. In the now, in the now, holiness as we lay aside these things that would distract us and holiness as we're called to focusing upon him. It's interesting. It's interesting that the average person with their anxieties, and we all struggle at times with anxieties, people struggle about 40% of the time with things that will never happen. Think about that. 40% of the things that you may worry about will never happen. About 30% of the things that you worry about are things in the past that cannot be changed. About 12% of the things we worry about, and maybe a little higher in certain cultural contexts, worry about the criticism of others. It's mostly untrue. Kind of worried, what do others think about me? Some of us, as we get a little older, may be <clears throat> tempted to worry about their health, thinking about health, and it does get a little worse with stress, and this business of worrying about your health, the more you worry about it, the worse it gets, you see. And only about 8%, only about 8% of the things we worry about are real problems that we have. But you see, singles call us away from that anxiety. They call us away so that we can cast our burdens upon the Lord and leave them there. So that we can hear the call of God to seek first God's kingdom, and then all these other things will be added unto you. You see, our singles give us that beautiful, beautiful picture of holiness in the now, of wholeness in the now, if you'll let me say it that way. Verse 35, all oh, they give us a tremendous example of effective service. Effective service. There are some Greek words that are used, and uh, the one word, simphero, it means to be advancing the cause of Christ. Our singles, by their service to the Lord, they are advancing the cause of Christ. And this, this other word, uh, euprosedros, oh, it's an interesting word for sure. It means that they are so focused on the Lord that they're sitting near to him just like a servant would be sitting near to the master with the eyes fixed upon the master, waiting, anticipating, waiting on the master to say, this is what I want you to do. And already being anticipating, sometimes doing it, all the master, just, yeah, okay, yeah, we're already doing it. We're on it, boss. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Jesus. We're already doing it. We're present and participating, not far away. Also, the other words, the other words, unhindered, aparispastos, that word, whoa, I can't even say it sometimes, and I think I messed it up that time, but it means to be unhindered. To be unhindered, it means to be without restrictions, to be without conditions. It's an unconditional kind of commitment to Jesus Christ that godly singles make. That they're going to be his regardless. Those blessed ladies, those blessed singles who left America and left mainland China and came here and started this church, they had an uncompromising, unconditional commitment to Jesus Christ. Unconditional. There were no restrictions about their commitments. They were in it to win it. They were all sold out. They weren't holding anything back. They had left their homes. They had left the land that God had called them to under duress, but they had not left Jesus, and they were continuing to 
be focused upon spreading his gospel here in Taiwan. The other word, brokos, from verse 35, we find this word meaning without, without any kind of snares. It means to be unsnared. It's, I, I like to watch this um, Na uh, National Geographic's channel. I like to watch these people who are trying to live out in the wild by themselves. And I like to watch how they try to catch animals to eat. They'll put a snare up, and then the idea is that the animal will put its paw through the snare, and that snare will close on the paw, and the more they jerk, the tighter it gets. That is, that animal is snared. In the same way, in a, in a different way rather, the idea is that singles are not snared by anything in life. They're not trapped by anything. They're free. They're unhindered. They're unsnared. They're serving out of a heart that's free. They're willing to go at any time to any place. They're traveling light, you see, and because they're committed unto their master. I'm so thankful those ladies whom we continue to celebrate one picture is downstairs if you want to go look in Coleman Hall, who we continue, uh, whom we continue to celebrate their lives. I'm so glad that they left their homes and came here. If not, we may not be here. Then the other question is, where would we be? And that's way out in the uh, speculative world. I don't even want to go there. Oh, what a model of freedom. What a model of choice. These singles, these godly singles, those that love the Lord Jesus, um, they model freedom for us. The freedom that we have in Christ. The freedom that too often we barter away for secondary things. And they model choice. Because you see, nobody can make them do this. The Greek word uh, hedreos really means they're, they're not given to any fluctuation. They're not changing their course. Their, their motivation is from within. Not because they're forced from without, but because they are motivated from within. Just this week, I shared with some folks that it's not my job to make anybody do anything. It's not my job to pressure you and to squeeze you into a corner and to make you do something that you don't want to do. That's not my job. You see, God has created every one of us and he's given us something special. He gave us the freedom of choice. That's a special gift that God has given to humanity. Now, since God has given that gift to all of his children, who would I be to take that gift away? Who would anybody be to try to take that gift of the freedom of choice away? Here's the problem. Here's the problem with external motivation. You can get people to do some things by applying pressure. Yeah, you can do that. The problem with that is this. When the pressure's gone, so does the performance, out the window. But when somebody is motivated from within, when it's an internal drive, an internal commitment, when it's a choice made in freedom, when that choice is to follow Jesus and love Jesus and serve Jesus, when that is within the heart, then that will continue all the days of one's life. Singles model that for us because by their choices, by their steadfastness, by the way that they've made their minds up, they are going to press on for Jesus. And they challenge us. They, they, it's a gift to be challenged. Did you know that? It is a gift to be challenged. Sometimes the best gift somebody can give us is to challenge us to excellence, to challenge us to growth. 
one of the most unloving things we can do is to not challenge others and encourage others to be all they can be in Christ. These singles, godly singles, they challenge the church. They are a precious gift. They give us that wonderful gift of calling us onward with Jesus. They call us away from the status quo. They call us away from just kind of being content to rock along with life. They call us toward excellence by the example that they set before us. When we think about the ladies that started this church, and we think about the singles that it continue to populate our church. When we think about the singles, I'm thinking one specifically, one brother I know who came here during the days of Evergreen, when Evergreen was really flourishing as a single man, his commitment was without question. God continues to bless this church with singles, and singles continue to be a blessing to this church. Their model of freedom. Oh, what, what self, what, daughter, fiance, what, what, what's up with that? You have any idea? Well, you see, the commentators, they're not real sure what, what verse 36 and 37 mean. Does it mean somebody who has a, a, a daughter uh, that is betrothed? And so the father is trying to decide whether to give her in marriage or not? Or does it mean that this is a man who is uh, be, uh, engaged to another woman, to a woman, and, and he's not real sure whether he should go through it? Or is it a man who's trying to decide about himself? Does he maintain his singleness or not? The commentators are kind of divided up. I'll let you take, but don't get lost in the weeds. Don't miss the point. The point is, whichever way it is, it's from a heart that is committed, that's decided, that's made its own mind up, that is motivated from within to take action either to marry or not to marry. Don't, don't, it's not under compulsion. Now, some singles really struggle, and I got that. I understand that. Some singles feel like that they're not going to be whole unless they're married. And I, I understand that. Uh, I was a single once, and I, I knew I wouldn't be whole. I tell you all, I'm just half a man without Brenda. I own it. I admit it. But let, let me say to everyone, the greatest, the greatest thing we can have is a relationship with Jesus that is pure, and from the inside, we're living it out. I heard a story of a chaplain who went to a psychiatric ward in a hospital. He was walking past with uh, one of the uh, counselors, and in this room was a woman, and she was going, Larry, 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 oh, Larry, 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 Larry. The chaplain looked over at the counselor and said, uh, what's going on with this woman here? And the counselor said, well, she was engaged to a man named Larry, and they broke up, and she kind of lost her mind, and she's, we're trying to help her. He went on down the hall a little while more and passed another room, and there was another woman in there going, Larry, 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 oh, Larry, 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 Larry. The counselor said, the, the, the chaplain looked at the counselor, what's wrong with her? What, what's up? The counselor said, oh, that's the one that married Larry. There's one thing worse than not being married, and that's being married wrong. There's nothing any better for a married man than to be married right. But there's nothing any worse than being married wrong. And you see, I understand the compulsion of some. I understand that. And yes, if, if God has not gifted you with that gift of singleness, stay in pursuit, stay open, fine. But make sure it's the right person. Because this is preventative medicine, folks. This is not curative. But honest, most of the time when somebody come and, comes and asks for pastoral care and counseling, I know it's most of oftentimes... It's because they've already decided that they're going to come apart. They can't live together. And, and how to make, how to come apart, separate, and, and have some sanity. 
Oh, hear me say, there's nothing better than being married right if that's your gift. But if that's not your gift, uh, if that's your gift and you're married wrong, you're in big trouble. Big, big time trouble. You see, our singles, they give us a beautiful picture of being married right. Because in one sense, they are married only unto the Lord Jesus. And they serve only the Lord Jesus. And they give us that beautiful, beautiful picture. Don't get lost in the weeds, though. When I was a little boy, we used to play baseball. And we played in this sand lot, and it had a lot of weeds out, out. And we'd lose the ball because we'd hit the ball. We couldn't find the crazy thing. Sometimes that happens to us when we look at Scripture, when we get caught up with, is it a fiancé? Is it a dog? What? Don't, 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 get caught, don't, don't get lost in the weeds, please. Please don't do that. I think we have a video, yes, uh huh. Singles, they've made their choice. They've got in the wheelbarrow. They've trusted Jesus. They've believed Jesus. They've determined they're going to follow Jesus. Now, some of you may be thinking, whoa, I could never do that. Some of you may be thinking, what? What? Get in a wheelbarrow? No, you mean to trust Jesus like that? I, I can't do that. I, I don't have that ability. Yes, you do. Let me ask a question, just simple. Yeah, okay, are you with me? How, how many of you have ever been on an airplane? Would you raise your hand? How many? You know what? That's just the same as being in a wheelbarrow because you have no control over things. When you're on that plane and that plane is taken off, you, you are completely in the hands of the pilot. You do have that capacity to trust. It's a capacity to trust in Jesus and Jesus alone for your salvation. It's a capacity to believe that he loves you so much that he was willing to die on a cross for you. You do have that capacity to trust and to believe. Yes, you do. You see, our singles show us, they showcase the results of choice. The better choice is for singleness. 
according to the Apostle Paul, in this time in which they lived. The only choice, he said, for widows is only in the Lord if they remarry. But then he said the happier choice is to remain, to remain as they were. The Apostle Paul was a picture of a person who was living out a successful single life. Now, I know some are going to say, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Now, I've read the Bible, and I know the Apostle Paul was part of the Sanhedrin, and be part of the Sanhedrin, he had to be married. And, and, and didn't he say in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, you know, do I not have a right to lead a wife around just like Peter and the other apostles? And, and, and how can you say, uh, let's see, uh, but he also said in 1 Corinthians 7, 7, he said, uh, I, I wish that everybody was just like me. Now, could it just have been that the Apostle Paul had been married and his wife died? Could it have been that the Apostle Paul's wife left him because of his faith in Jesus? Who knows? Your guess is better than mine. The point is, the Apostle Paul living life as with singular devotion to Jesus Christ, he had focused service. Focused, you say? Oh, you, you need to know, very, very focused. Definitely focused, uh, so that he was willing. He said, I, I received 40 stripes minus one five times. That's, you know, a whole lot of beating on the back. He said, you know, I was beaten with rods three times. I was stoned because of my faith in Jesus. Does that sound like anything going on in Syria and in the Middle East that you hear today? And yet people with that single-minded focus. Yeah, the Apostle Paul said, I was in danger. I was in danger in the sea, in the countryside, from the Gentiles, from my own countrymen, from false brothers. I was shipwrecked. I spent a day and a night in the ocean. Service, you better know he had to have focus to be able to stay in it, to win it. And what a picture of holiness that he was as he was completely sold out. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Effective service? Most definitely. Sold out for Jesus? For sure. In Acts chapter 20, when he left the people at Ephesus, he was on his way back, going back to Jerusalem. They, he, he told, I'll never see you guys again. And then he, he talked to them, and he said, I, I don't count my life as anything except wanting to do the will of Jesus. Acts chapter 21, verse 13, roughly the same thing. But Jesus, as the single Focused, you better know he was focused. He had to be focused. Because you see, let's see, Jesus, how would you like to be the bread king? Jesus, how would you like to be the miracle worker? Jesus, how would you like to be just the political figure that would deliver us? The different temptations that came upon him in his life, up to and including his dear friend Peter, taking him by the hand and telling him, no, you're not going to Jerusalem and die. Let me tell you, Jesus, how you got this wrong, and I'm going to straighten you out with this. Focused, yes, focused on serving his father, knowing that his life was intended to be a ransom sacrifice for many. A picture of holiness, you know it. Completely pure. Completely pure. Jesus himself, without sin, the lamb that was slain, that one who was, that the lamb was pointing to, this Jesus who was perfectly pure on the cross had his blood shed, that perfect blood for you and for me. Effective service? Oh, we know it was effective service because on the third and appointed day, Jesus Christ came back from the dead never to die again. That is proof positive of how effective his service was. It was completely accepted and embraced by his father. The sacrifice that was made was right. 
and freedom of choice. Nobody made Jesus do this. No, Jesus chose to do this. He said, nobody takes my life. I lay it down. I am choosing to lay down my life out of love. He showcased the results of what choice is all about. Living for others. Living for the kingdom of God. Choice has consequence. Now back in my homeland, there's a kind of automobile insurance. It's called no-fault insurance. That means if you have a wreck, it really doesn't matter who's at fault. Companies get together and they decide what to do with it. No fault. This is just a wreck. Hear me say this. In the real world, our choices do have consequence. What we decide to do with Jesus Christ has eternal consequence. If we choose to ignore him, then that has a consequence. If we choose to follow him and grow in him and learn of him and grow with others and other brothers and sisters in grace and in love as we learn what it means to be a faithful follower of Jesus as we go through a process of discipleship which tears away all of the secondary agendas that we bring and crystallizes our commitment to Christ so that we have a singularity of vision where we determine that we are going to love him, walk with him, and see his kingdom spread through the gospel of Jesus. That has a consequence as well. My brothers and sisters, the singles of our church, they call us to celebrate the kingdom of of God. They call us to celebrate Jesus. How do we celebrate our singles? We celebrate Jesus. We love him. We live for him. We live in him. We allow him to live his life through us. And we're on mission with him. Even as we grow, we're putting down deeper and deeper roots in love as we're wrapping our lives around him he's wrapping his life around us and when that happens then he is sending us out into the world to be his ambassadors because you see Jesus had a single focus the son of man Luke 19 10 the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost When you came here this morning, what did you come expecting to hear? An answer for a personal need? Or did you come saying to the Lord, God, speak into my heart that I might hear from you, that I might be more conformed into your image, that I might be made that much closer to who you want me to be? Our singles challenge us, just like Jesus challenges us. You want to celebrate singleness? Celebrate Jesus. Man, I celebrate him. We sing about him. A couple times this morning, Sister Jerry, I thought, if somebody tapped me on the shoulder, I would say, beam me up, Lord. I'm ready to go. Because we gather and we celebrate him. Because, you see, he had a singular focus for us. Let's pray together.